How are you? Doing very well. Lewis, Dr. Manny from the Art Shed in Brisbane. Now, you're a doctor, but you're an artist. Tell me more about that. Yeah, jack of all trades, master of none, but uh, it's been really delightful for the few years we've had this store. Inspiring creativity in our customers and our visitors has been uh, ever so much more rewarding than prescribing antidepressants for people in general practice. I really believe it's something that's very good for people and uh, I look forward to continuing in this role as, as much as, as I can. That sounds great. We're going to be uh, drawing a, a live model today, aren't we? You bet. Live drawing. My favourite. Well, let's go and go to the studio and get stuck in there. Excellent. Thank you. Let's go and do it. Manny, well here we are at your studio, but back at the art shed you were telling me about the creative process and drawing. Can you explain to me a little bit more about that? Yeah, we were uh, focusing on the importance of creativity. It's something that I'm, I, I'm very convinced about and I think more and more people are growing aware of the importance and the benefits of creativity to people in general, Graham. Mm -hmm. um, some of the, just to list some of them, uh, of course it's, a, it's a, a really fun thing to do. I think we're born to be creative, all of us. Absolutely. Uh, it's just that many of us get lost in all those other things that, that uh, life brings to us. Secondly, it's uh, the easiest and most direct way of achieving self-actualization, mm -hmm. meaning uh, get a sense of uh, having done something, having achieved something. That's why it's used in therapies, in, mm. in uh, hospitals and um, uh, <clears throat> all sorts of places where people need to start recovering from emotional damage and hurt. Um, so, yeah, I, I really do believe also that in education, creativity will be the currency of the future. Absolutely. You spoke about the benefits of creativity in drawing. Can you tell me more about that? Drawing in particular, the reason I focus on drawing so much is because despite the fact that all of the benefits of creativity accrue to whatever form of creativity you take up, whether it be singing, playing an instrument, whether it be um, sculpting, whatever. Drawing is the simplest, mm -hmm. probably the cheapest, mm -hmm. most direct, most easily accessible and transportable way of expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. Not only that, there's a, a great honesty about drawing. In painting, you can cover layer over layers that didn't work, but in drawing, a line usually reflects the spirit of the person making that line at the time. It's hard to correct the drawing. Okay, that's really the foundation of, of art in a sense, yes, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's been said so often, but it's so true. I honestly used to believe about 10 years ago, I was convinced I couldn't draw a line. And it actually delayed me getting stuck into, you know, making art. Okay. As soon as I decided that at that time that um, on the basis of recommendations by people, artists who, whose opinion I respected, that draw, 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 I thought, okay, well, I'm going to have to teach myself how to draw. Today, I'd like to show our viewers a number of exercises which, through my research, I discovered were the simplest and easiest ways to train myself to draw well. I uh, haven't been taught formally, I haven't gone to university or college to learn about drawing or painting. Uh, I, I like to think of myself as self-taught uh, and it was just miraculous when I discovered these few exercises. These are the core of the exercises that I've put on my um, Just Draw DVD that r doing these repeatedly week after week really increases your ability, your facility to, to lay down a line in the way you, you want to. Sounds wonderful, it really it's does. It's really good fun. Absolutely. So can we begin by showing you let's, let's uh, some of these exercises? Let's go through with this. Terrific. Yes. The first and probably the most important exercise that I like to teach is gesture drawing. Most people who've done a drawing course have done some gesture drawing. I'd like to also touch on some of the uh, reasons why it's so important. Many people who learn to draw start off fairly tight, hoping to make a, a lovely finished accurate drawing. But I believe it's most important, probably a lot more important, to start off really loose and practice being loose and flowing, from which you can tighten up. But I find that people who only ever draw tight really find it hard to loosen up. So today we've got Jade, our lovely model, who will join us and assist us in showing you what I mean by gesture drawing. Okay, in a gesture drawing, we're not out to draw a, p a pretty picture. We're not out to, to capture the outline or to draw what the thing is that we're drawing. What we're actually trying to capture is the movement, the gesture of the object or the model in space. So we wait for a moment. Our model 
Jade will strike a dynamic pose, meaning something interesting and twisty in the torso. When you're ready, thanks Jade. We pause for a moment. We don't start off straight away. What we try and think of first is to imagine the feel of the muscles in Jade's body to feel what it feels like in our own body so that we can actually feel the energy and feel the movement in the pose. Without taking the pencil or graphite or charcoal off the paper, one continuous sweeping motion and you'll notice that I'm not looking at my drawing. So. Once again, I pause for a moment, try and get a feel of that lovely twist in her, in her torso and the, and the crease in her chest and rib cage. Matter of fact, I'm going to start there and just get the energy of that. Many, how do these exercises actually help with what you're doing now? It's very free flow. Yes. It's practice. It's practice over time. And what I'm practicing here is actually feeling the energy, feeling the movement, feeling the gesture. There we go. Thank you, Jade. Okay, again, I've got to remind myself not to look at my drawing. I feel the sweep and the motion. There we go. Look at that. Very simple, very loose, almost calligraphic and it's captured the essence of the movement. Thank you Jade. Another one please. Uh, look at that lovely curve. It really is inspirational. So Manny, yes. um, the materials you're using at the moment, what, yes, what is that you've got in your hand? Well it happens to be graphite. I really like the slipperiness of graphite. For this exercise in particular I find it important not to have too much resistance in the materials. There we go. Lovely. And another. another J. I like to think that um, because we pause and feel the energy of the pose, I like to think that this trains our bodies and our minds to be able to see something, have an emotional response and then lay it down in a more permanent gesture on paper or canvas. That's, re that's really it in a nutshell. Oh, thanks Jade, that's really lovely. Love those curves, Jay. Really good. And another, please. Jay, that's great. Why don't you take a break, Graham? Well, while Jade takes a break, we might go to a commercial break as well. Welcome back, viewers. Manny, you were actually uh, doing drawings before that were very loose. Now you're going to explain some contour drawings to us. That's right, Graham. The next exercise I'd like to discuss is one called blind contour drawing. 
Before we launch into that though, I think it's wise that I explain the difference between a contour line and an outline. So, an outline, as, it, as the name suggests, is exactly that. It uh, follows the outside of what might be the shadow of something. So, for instance, that might be someone's arm, an elbow bent facing towards you. That's an outline. Let's have a look at a contour line. A contour drawing, on the other hand, unlike that little scribble I just did, has what I call interior contour lines. These lines that come across delineate the contour of internal shapes and better confer a sense of the three-dimensionality of what you're drawing. I'm drawing blind, meaning I'm not looking at my drawing, but I am looking very intently at, at the model. The benefit of this exercise by making yourself not look at the drawing, you're not allowing yourself to look at the drawing, and you're forcing yourself to look at the model, it improves your ability to see. It improves your concentration when you're actually looking. So the gist of this exercise is that I have my drawing over to the side here, and I don't look at it. It's hard to uh, not cheat, I must admit. Then, before commencing, very importantly, I rest my pencil on the paper and my eye on a point on the outline of the model's form and I wait until I'm absolutely convinced that my pencil is resting on that part of the model. And then as I trace along the line that I'm following, I try and as much as possible keep uppermost in my mind the notion that I'm actually drawing on the curves and the outline or the contour of the model. Now because I don't actually look at the model, it's going to be terribly out of proportion. Remember though, this isn't a finished drawing. This is an exercise. And I'm going back to another part of the contour, so I don't know anywhere, I don't know where I've started back. It might be over her face or it might be very out of proportion, but that sometimes adds to the interest in these drawings. I've got to pause and imagine again because I've forgotten about the fact that I'm supposed to be imagining the pencil along the edge of the model. That's it. To give us an idea, so you can see the face there, the elbow, the breast, all out of proportion. But that exercise is so, so important. It really trains you to follow a line. It trains, it teaches you to think exactly what you're drawing and to follow what you're seeing. So that link is reinforced tremendously with this blind contour drawing. Thank you, Jake. How accurate do you feel that your drawings need to be, or is it there's a lot of expression still in this as well? This one I'm trying to be fairly faithful to the appearance of the model, but at the same time trying to retain a degree of the lovely flow and gesture of her figure. Mm -hmm. you've uh, begun to draw in a way that uh, attempts to capture reality, there's a lot about the relationship of one line that you might have laid down to the next. So at, the, at each and every point in this drawing I'm trying to relate the next line with the line that I've just laid before it, or the nearest line to it. Is it like an imaginary grid in your head? Not so mathematical, I don't think. Thank goodness. Never liked maths much. People often say, my goodness, how do you draw things like noses and ears? It's so complicated. 
but you treat each little complicated bit of the model, whether it be fingers, hands, ears or nose, as a small model and you just look at the lines and follow the contours and before you know it, hey presto, it kind of looks like an ear, even though you're trying to draw a foot. these sweeping gestural lines, if I'd never practiced doing those lovely curves in our, in our gesture drawings, it would be much more difficult to try and capture these curves when I need to in a drawing such as this. That might do for now. Thank you Jade, have a break. We might just take a break too uh, and we'll be back after this commercial. Jade, you're comfortable? Lovely. So up until now I've spoken about some of the exercises that um, I find really beneficial for artists to learn to draw. Um, this is a little bit more of a, a more polished drawing, a more finished drawing, but what you'll notice is that I'm actually doing the exercises and blending one into another to end up with the desired result. I'm going to show you how with two colours, just a sanguine colour which is like a red oxide colour and white and the toned paper you can actually achieve a, a reasonably dramatic effect trying to capture that lovely movement and sweep and refining the gesture drawing putting in some contour lines where I see important lines, important contours Lovely crease lines there. It's the ultimate in paper watching, isn't it? It's great, you bet. Good definition. And the belly button and the line that comes up. At this stage, of course, you can use an eraser. This is a, a valuable tool and that is if you can actually declare the shape of part of the form with your direction of your lines then it uh, it's really helpful for delineating the shape and defining the shape
amazing what you can achieve with uh, just two colours, the light and the contour. Isn't it lovely? Isn't it amazing? Thank you, Jade. That's wonderful. Thank you, Manny, for uh, inviting us into your studio today. It was just wonderful to see what you can do. Uh, you're a doctor that teaches art. You can write prescriptions for inspiration, which I think is wonderful. Oh, thank you for your kind words, Graham. It's been a pleasure. If I could just leave on one note and say to people, especially people daunted by the prospect of drawing, that each of us is born with about 5,000 bad drawings in us. The sooner you get them out, the sooner you'll get to the good ones. That's amazing. And if you'd like to see more of the great people like Manny, uh, you can come to colourinyourlife.com.au and we'll see you next time. Well, that was truly inspirational today. If you'd like to see more of Manny and the team at the Art Shed, just drop in and see them at Montague Road in Brisbane. But until we see each other again, remember, as I always say, make sure you put some colour in your life. See you next time. <laughs>